India. Over 1.1 billion people crowd its modern cities and rural townships, speaking hundreds of languages and practicing a number of different religions. India is considered one of the oldest civilizations, with settlements dating back over 11,000 years. It is also home to several of the oldest records of ancient technologies. Ancient Sanskrit texts dating back as far as 6,000 BC describe in varying but vivid detail flying machines called Vimanas. Vimanas are aeroplanes and they are powered by some jet engines. This seems to be true because all the <coughs> description of the flight behavior, elephants ran away in panic. Grass was thrown out because there was a lot of pressure from behind those vimanas. So that we can say this is a description of the spaceship. <coughs> Mainstream historians believe the Vimana texts are myths. Many of the documents contain passages that seem to describe modern machinery and technology. The Vimanika Shastra goes into metals that are used in these craft. It talks about electricity and power sources. It talks about the pilots and the clothing they have to wear. It talks about the food that they eat. It talks even about the weapons that are kept on these airships. The flight manuals of the Vimanas are quite similar to the flight manuals you find in the modern passenger flight business or uh, when you go to the military jet engines. Of course, they have also flight manuals because it's necessary for a pilot to get knowledge about his plane he wanted to fly with. We also learn that these vimanas could be controlled mentally and this is a technology that modern militaries are beginning to develop even today with as advanced as we think we are almost every manifestation of an actual extraterrestrial civilization today would look almost like magic to us where it has to do with technological electromagnetic systems that interface with coherent thought and organized thought. And this gets into to people go, well, now you're losing me here. But I tell people, I said, yeah, well, you got to push your boundaries a little bit if you're talking about a true interstellar civilization. The Vimanaka Shastra, or science of aeronautics, indicates Vimanas used a propulsion system based on a combination of gyroscopes, electricity, and mercury. Is this possible? Mercury is an unusual element. Mercury is metal. It's also a liquid. And uh, is a conductor of electricity. Now, there's unusual things you can do with mercury. You can put it into a closed gyroscopic device with mercury spinning around. And then you can electrify it. Studies have been done by, on this by NASA and by other scientists. And they find that you have levitation effects, anti-gravity kind of effects, and a spinning bright light is part of it too. The Vimanaka Shastra suggests Vimanas were powered by several gyroscopes placed inside a sealed liquid mercury vortex. Here's an example of a little kid's gyroscope. You spin it with a heavy wheel around a central axis. Well, a gyroscope seems to do a lot of strange things, even defy gravity. And it does this because it uses what's called rotational or angular momentum. And it wants to keep a particular orientation on its spin axis, the center rod. If you push on that rod, it will want to right itself up to its original orientation. It wants to keep that same angular momentum. Gyroscopes are used all over the place, in airplanes, in spacecraft, in submarines. This allows them to determine their position based on where they started. They can also use it for 
finding their velocity, or even just the orientation of the vehicle in space. One of the texts talks about Mercury rotating and driving some sort of a powerful wind or a windmill effect. That might be some sort of what we call a flywheel energy storage, where you have a spinning disk and then you extract energy from it slowly. That would be the mercury. And then that could be used to drive some sort of a propeller or what we call a ducted fan sort of system, like you have in a hovercraft. Mercury would be quite good for that because it's a high density, so you'd have a small package for your power plant, and that's always good when you're building an aircraft. Flywheel energy storage systems, however, tend to lose power quickly. To navigate across space, its size would have to be enormous. They're fine for use by power companies for load leveling. You put energy in when you don't need it, you get energy out when you need it. But they're sitting on the ground. They have something light enough to actually fly. It's, it's not at all clear that this would be a practical device. Now, maybe the people were trying to describe something that kind of looked like this to them. It might not have actually been mercury. It might have been some other liquid metal. The Mercury Vortex engine is perhaps a failure in the translation because uh, the uh, vortex is uh, not a material quite suitable to a jet engine. The issue of how are these civilizations traveling faster than the speed of light is a fundamental question. It's a scientific application of things that have been studied for thousands of years and they're within the Vedas the ancient Vedic teachings or other ancient teachings, and it is there. But if Vimanas existed, could this prove there was a worldwide transportation network thousands of years before Columbus? In the Bhagavad Purana, which is an ancient Sanskrit history, there is a description of a spacecraft that was piloted by a king named Shalva. It's described that it was made of metal, it was described that it sometimes appeared to be in two places at once. It was described as having a motion similar to that of a butterfly. And these descriptions are consistent with what people who observe UFOs today report. In other Sanskrit texts, such as the Mahabharata, the Rig Veda, and the Ramayana, there can be found descriptions of Vimana measuring as wide as 100 feet and often equipped with the capabilities of modern aircraft. One Vimana produced a shaft of light, which when focused on a target, consumed it with its power. It's like a Buck Rogers or Flash Gordon movie from the 30s. They read like the wildest science fiction. People are flying around in airships called Vimanas, blasting each other and having aerial fights, destroying entire cities. And the crazy thing is that all of those stories are totally accepted in the modern society of India. I don't think we can say that these descriptions are simply imagination because even though they were written thousands of years ago, they match what many people today report in terms of observing the actions of UFOs. Were they just mythological tales that they're making up, fantasy? Or these physical real events and they're trying to describe them as the best that they could? That seems to make more sense to me. I gotta tell you this, I would be out of a job in India because there, if I were to talk about ancient aliens and ancient gods, they would say, okay, so what else is new? There are some reports that such fields of fused sand, of glass, have been found in places including India. But if they do exist, this would confirm the descriptions given in the ancient Sanskrit writings that the people of those times had weapons resembling our modern nuclear weapons. They were called Brahmastras.
According to the Hindu texts, the Brahmastras came from gods. But who were these supernatural beings? Many of these Hindu gods did look different than humans. Generally, they're often depicted as having blue skin. And that may well be describing extraterrestrials. Victor Schauberger. He developed a type of vortex engine, artificial tornado, as it were, where vortex activity and gyroscopic activity could be harnessed with liquids such as water or mercury. My grandfather, Victor Schauberger, made some big inventions. Inventions that lead uh, maybe back to ancient times. This is the so-called Repulsin or Repulsine in German. It was meant to be some kind of propulsion system. Mounted in a submarine or an aircraft vertically. To create a field Victor Schauberger called biological vacuum. And the aircraft or the submarine should be sucked into this field. The special shape of this device led to the story that Victor Schauberger is the inventor of flying saucers. At the time of its development, the Repulsion's inverse propulsion system seemed revolutionary. But Victor Schauberger believed he had rediscovered an ancient technology. Victor also refers to old Indian texts where he reads out of these texts that these old peoples, uh, they used some kind of flowing magnetism that allowed them to overcome gravity. According to early Sanskrit texts discovered in India, aircraft called Vimanas used a similar propulsion system thousands of years ago. Is it possible that German scientists viewed ancient texts like the Bhagavad Gita, not as legendary myth, but as a source of historical and scientific fact. The Germans were the best Oriental scholars in the world, so they translated the, uh, the ancient text, uh, Sanskrit and later, into German. And the Germans studied these ancient Indian epics and were familiar with the ideas of Vimanas. And so by combining that with this vortex technology and allegedly this crash disk from 1936 in the Black Forest, they then came up with their designs for these flying saucers. The swastika. This simple four-sided figure is the ultimate symbol of Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime. its origins reveal a much different message, one that dates back over 3,000 years. Swastika is a Sanskrit word from ancient India. It means mark of good fortune. And the same symbol is found not only in ancient India, but all over the world.